wants to go astray, cause of inside, will I stay, cause he's done so much for me, that I can't repay, so the least I'll do,
Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yah Elohim, who brought you to the land of Mizraim, and out of the house of slavery. You can have none of the mighty ones against my face, now make for yourself a carved image, on your likeness of that, which in the heavens above, which in the earth beneath, which in the water is under the earth. Now bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh Elohim, am a jealous owl, risen the crookness of the fathers, on the children, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But shall allow me commitment to thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. Do not bring the name of Yahweh to naught, for Yahweh does not leave one unpunished who brings his name to naught. Remember the Sabbath day to set apart. Six days your labor and shall do all your work. But the seventh day of the Sabbath, Yahweh, do not only work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor a male servant, nor a female servant, nor your cattle, nor a stranger who is with your gates. For in six days I met the heavens and the earth. The seeing, and all that is in them, and rest seventh day. Therefore, I bless seventh day and say her part. Respect your father and your mother, because the days are prolonged upon the soil, which all of them is giving you. And not murder, and not commit adultery, and not steal, and not perform one snake against your neighbor, and not covet neighbor's house, and not covet neighbor's wife, and not his male servant, and not his female servant, and not his ox, and not his donkey, whichever belongs to neighbors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's just give y'all some praise right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep praising y'all right now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty master. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It is good to be back home fellowship and in the presence of the Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Let us lift holy hands. Oh, Abba Yah, our Father in heaven, we come before you this morning, Father, with all our faults, all of our things that we do, Father, that we may or may not know, Father, but we know that you are worthy, that you are good, Father, and that, Father, we lift our hands to the only one, Father, that was, that is, and is to come. Father, we come right now to lift up a mighty resound before heaven, Father, and all those who worship Yahweh, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father, we just command, Father, that your holy presence take over this place, Father, that you do a mighty thing, Father, in the midst of your people, that we serve you with all that we are, Father, in the name of Jesus. We look forward to you today, Father. We bless you right now, Father, in the heavens, Father, where you are, Father, we lift up a holy fire with praise this morning. We ask you to lead our shepherd, Father, in all that he shall speak. Let his mouth be led, Father. Let his thoughts be guided, Father. Let it be full of the Holy Presence, Father, that we might be saved, Father, that you might call home a people that is yours, Father. We thank you for bringing us to this place safely, being with us, surrounding us, Father, keeping our feet on the path, guiding us in the light, Father. It's none like you, Yahweh. It's none like you, Father. In all the heavens of heavens, Father, there's none like you. We bless your holy name, Father. We thank you for this holy Shabbat, Father. We shall come and hear the word of life, Father. We thank you for all of these things. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the whole house of Israel say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Still kind of hot in here right now, right? I'm about 20, 30 minutes to cut them extractors off there, okay? Hallelujah. Glory to the King. You may be seated, Israel. Hallelujah. Ain't y'all good? Where, where's Lydia at? Where's Lydia? Come up here, baby. Look at my baby. So, this 
This is Lydia. Come on up here, baby. See, little Lydia. So yesterday, Lydia said, Lydia gave me these flowers right here. <laughs> And she said, she said to me, she said, she said, Pastor, I want to give you your flowers while you're living. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Isn't that all right? More out of the mouth of babes, huh? Well, we know tomorrow is the feast of Pentecost, right? And then, um, of course, for those of you who may not know the significance of it, I wouldn't leave this place without being filled with the Holy Spirit. I just wouldn't do it. Can y'all hear me? Turn me up a little bit more, all right? I just wouldn't leave this place without the Holy Spirit. I don't know how you can be around all this anointing and all this power and then not want to be filled. Now, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit is something we need to continually do. Y'all know this, right? Y'all hear me back here? This is not a one-time thing. Just like the gas go out of a gas tank. You've got to pray in the Holy Spirit to keep that body of yours filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because there's one thing about being filled with the Holy Spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't have too much time for sin. But you have a whole lot of time of y'all dwelling in that temple. Hallelujah. And you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So remember, he resides, he lives inside of you. Hallelujah. Now, we need to give the Father a hand praise for delivering us from the religion of Christianity. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm? Because when... Uh, when the Most High Yah delivered us from Christianity, He delivered us from sin, iniquity, and transgression. Hallelujah. He delivered us from Satan's religion. Now you think about this for a second. You think about this for a second. So you got, you got Satan that has been influenced, influential in men's life, in man's life. Put me a little bass in here, bro. From the beginning of time to get people, especially his people, to break his commandments. And so what does Satan do? He raises up religion of Christianity. And what do they teach you? To break his commandments. <laughs> then the Most High Yah, never forgetting about his people, always keeping covenant and keeping promises to them that love him to a thousand generations. And he raises us up in the midst of this wicked generation as a remnant because we love him and we keep his commandments. Hallelujah. That is a marvelous work. That is a wondrous work. That's a glorious work in this daytime and hour because Jesus said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. Is that right? Now, he that saith that he loved me and keepeth not my commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So he's delivered us from a great deception. <laughs> Hallelujah. The religion out there, you know, religion, I said I was going to talk about that word some time ago, you know, religion. You know, this earth was full, it was populated full of religion. In the days of Noah. We're going to get to Noah here for a minute too, all right? But remember, they was building the Tower of Babel back then. And the whole earth was under Satan's influence. The whole earth, just like it is right now. 
It's under Satan's influence, and, and, and it, we can tell by everything that's going south, going contrary to y'all, that he's soon to come. Now, don't be like a lot of people did in Noah's day. They get weary in well-doing. Don't get weary in well-doing. Can you imagine 119 years? You standing right at the door. And then you become an unbeliever? So hold on, Israel. Hold on. Glory to the king. Well, hallelujah, won't be before you long today, but you know, I've traveled a lot in this world. I have. And I've seen other cultures, and I've not been taught what was wrong. Other cultures have not been taught it was wrong for us, you know, to, for them to express their feelings and emotions. In America, we've been taught to reserve and preserve our feelings and emotion, even though we are an emotional people. You know what I mean? And, and it affects us even in worship. It affects us in our dedication because we try to preserve our emotions and feelings when we should actually let go of our emotions and feelings. That's one reason why a lot of people can't receive the Holy Spirit because they can't feel after him from the Spirit. Hallelujah, because we're too, we're too cardinal, all right? So people respond easily and naturally to the prompting of the Holy Spirit in different places of the world. In America, we're dignified. And because we're dignified, we're not as sanctified as we should be. So, teacher, let's go to Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12 real quick. Hallelujah. Y'all is good, isn't he? I, I do need some more bass, uh, Elder Doug. I can can y'all hear me up there? Y'all can? Okay, good. <clears throat> it's important to be heard because faith comes by hearing. All right? Some people need to be healed in here today, right? So, repeat after me. The kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven is at hand. Don't get it? Making a declaration. Glory to the king. All right, come on, read, teach. In those days. Whoa, now how come I can't sound like that? <laughs> in those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent you, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of Yah, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him to Jerusalem, and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers! O generation of what? Vipers. O generation of what? Vipers. And believe me, we're still faced with the same generation of vipers today. All right? Well, look what he said to them. O generation of vipers! Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now you think about this for a second. That wasn't nice of John, was it? To call them people generation of vipers. They get on me for calling people names. You understand what I mean? But he called them a brood of snakes. Vipers. The religious people in the religious order of the day. Because you have to understand that the axe has been laid to the root of the tree. And in order for Israel to be able to identify what's true and what's false, then the false has to be called out. Because the people are under a delusion of what they believe to be true when it's really false. You see, there are many people out here that are vying for your attention. They're vying for your souls. God's giving you the ears to hear. And it's kind of unorthodox how he give you the ears to hear, right? Because you listen to me, I'm a, I'm a pretty rough preacher. You know what I mean? But the only way you could hear me is, is if you had your spirit dealing with you. Because 
You think about this. This is a, a, a generation where in feminism, where children are our oppressors and women are ruling over us. Is that right? This is a generation where the, the soft-spoken man is heard more so than the manly man. This is a generation that is after masculinity. This is a generation that they don't understand Israelite culture. I mean, not only did John the Baptist have um, some big huspas, but he was up against that juggernaut of that religion in that day right there calling him out. Now, why in the world would they be at his baptism? Why would they be there as a merchant unless he was effective? Because he wasn't in their churches. He was not in their synagogues. This man was out in the wilderness. You know the reason why? Because the religious people found out that this man had a voice. And it was a voice of one crying in the wilderness. And that voice began to draw all the people that Yah had already ordained to eternal life. See, there used to be a time that you was in religion. You didn't know who you were, but you were religious. You were religious about going to church, religious about reading your Bible, and then one day you heard a voice. Uh-huh. Now, the voice in itself is insignificant. It's the voice. The voice is there to prepare you for the one to come. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting this? So then in the annual times, all of a sudden, you walk into your little old life, and the next thing you know, what is that? What is that? For the first time in your life, you heard the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Yes, there was a preacher, but it wasn't a preacher preaching to you when you heard the voice. The voice you heard was a voice ringing in your spirit. That Holy Spirit began to work inside of you, and whereas before you didn't know his voice, all of a sudden, you understood his voice. And as the whole song goes, where he leads me, I will follow. And you find yourself following that voice. Hallelujah. And guess what? It's that same voice that is still leading you today. But while you're being led today, you still have to be warned of the religious snakes and the religious vipers. See, they we're there to make a distinction between what is holy and unholy, what is right and unright. You don't put a difference between that which is righteous and profane because people get confused real quick. Are you following me? Read on, watch this. Bring the forth the fruit or fruits meet for repentance. Now, when you bring, he, he admonished them to bring forth fruit to do what? Meet repentance. In other words, you need to have something that is associated with right walking, right talking, right living, right believing. Is that right? Right direction. You need that, right? Read on. And think not to say within yourselves. Don't you say where? Within yourselves. How much communication do we do within ourselves? Huh? How much communication do we do within ourselves? Don't you even think for one minute to say within yourself. Now, this is the preacher, John. Speaking to these brood of vipers, are you following me? And he's answering their thoughts while he's preaching. He's checking them even in their thoughts. Read on. We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you. See, that's how we justify ourselves today. And you think about it. There's a lot of religious institutions today. A lot of voices in this world today. Huh? Huh? And actually think about this for a moment, for a good second, huh? How many people actually really truly preach and teach about the Holy Spirit? How many people put emphasis on being filled with the Holy Spirit? The scribe Pharisees couldn't do it because they didn't have it. John could do it because he had it. 
So when you see ministries that are out there that are not preaching and teaching about being filled with the Holy Spirit and they're leaving that out, they're leaving out a major step in salvation. Because the book says if you don't have his spirit, then you're none of his. You can dress holy. You can look holy. You can wear your fringes. You can be bearded up. You can put your head covering on. But if you don't have his spirit, then you are none of his. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, don't leave here today without the Holy Spirit. Read on. For I say unto you, what'd you say? That Yah is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Y'all hear that? He's able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Hmm? Look at all these stones in here that y'all raised up. Hmm? Hard headed, stout hearted, obstinate, vindictive. Cold, hard, cruel. Huh? And he was able to these stones. Huh? Not only was he able of these stones to raise them up, but y'all was able to get water out of the stone. When you received the Holy Spirit, did he not bring forth that water? Did he not give you that refreshing for you to be refreshed? And once you get filled with that refreshing, once you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't never say you thirsty, you just want more. You don't say I'm thirsty, you just say give me more. Give me more. And give me more. He told Moses to speak to the rock, but Moses smitten the rock, but out of the rock, what came what? Water. So here we are partakers today of what John had already prophesied about. Some 2,000 years later, and the word is still happening. But what we need out of the stones today, we don't need water just coming out. We need water that's going to overflow. We need water that's going to fill. We need a water that's going to drown us. That's what we need. Hallelujah. We need that water that is always going to be flowing and always washing and always cleansing. Hallelujah. Reteach. And now also, the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto there repentance. Unto what? Repentance. Unto what? Repentance. The sole purpose of getting immersed or being baptized is for repentance. It's not a show for everybody else to see, but it's to lead you to repentance. And the significance of being baptized is the immersion of being washed. Is that right? Making you clean. He says, I am leading you to the baptism so that you can repent. All right? He can take you to the water. But then John goes on to say this. But he that comes after me. There's one coming after me. Is mightier than I. Now, <laughs> mind you, John did not. Hey, notice what he said. Today, they will call him arrogant. But he said, there's one coming after me who is my Who is my dear? Can you imagine how the scribes and Pharisees looked at that? Who you think you are? Well, I just got finished telling you who I am. That means if somebody coming after me is mightier than I, that means I'm mightier than you are. <laughs> He's not denying his calling. <laughs> Read. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Now, if you mighty, that's pretty low when you can't. <laughs> You can't even unlatch somebody's shoes. Hmm? Come on. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. With the Holy Spirit and what? With fire. So that's why you must be born again. Born again. 
when Adam and Eve was on this earth, they had to be born again. Everybody has to be born again. I know they took out the book of Enoch from the scriptures, right? And remember what it said about the book of Enoch. They had these giants and they had these Nephilims that would come down and procreate with the daughters of men. And they tell you that, that well, there is no way that, that an angel can procreate uh, with women and, and bring forth uh, some, some seed. But that ain't what the book says. That ain't what the book says. I know what, what the mistranslations keep saying over and over again. But if they ain't, hey, if the angel's able to do that, and then not only that, but y'all followed it up by putting this seed into a woman and bringing forth the holy seed. That's the king himself. Then he turned around and birthed you and put his seed into you. Tell the truth. You know you're not the same person you used to be. You know you ain't the same. You know that you're born from above. You are not of this earth. Hallelujah. You know you've been changed. You know you've been changed. And you're changed because his seed remains in you. So don't give me that stuff that y'all can't have sons that come from men, come from women. Uh-oh. So you should thank the Father. That out of all the human beings that's been born on this earth, and throughout all the annual times, he give us an opportunity of an eternity by him predestinating us, predetermining us, calling us, knowing us when we didn't know ourselves and wrote our name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. That in itself is enough to get excited about. So when we sing that song, there's no one like all y'all. You know that there ain't no one like y'all because only y'all could reach you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this Holy Spirit was talked about and made reference to many times in Israel. Over in Job 32, 19, when Elihu had enough of the matter and he wanted to go, he had to say somebody was young and he held his peace. Listen to the reference that he made. He says, behold, my belly is as wine, which have no vent. Now, y'all know what happens with wine don't have a vent, right? That means it's getting ready to explode. <laughs> y'all getting this? Huh? It is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak that I may be what? Does that sound familiar to all? <laughs> you see, what the problem with a lot of you people out there on the other side of that camera and some of you in here is, is that, see, you're just like new wine. But you're trying to put old wine. into new wine skin. If you sick and tired of yourself, then speak. I'm not talking about opening up your mouth. I'm talking about opening up the mouth where the well springs of living water that comes up out of your soul, out of your belly, to the point where you have to release yourself because this is the refreshing. Well, we'll, we cause the weary to rest. <laughs> Today, tomorrow, the next day is a day to open up your mouth and be refreshed. 
and you will have your answer once the Spirit gives you the utterance. See how in tune they was even with the Spirit back then? Now, in the beginning was the Word. This invisible Yah. In the beginning was the Word. He said his words, they are spirit and they are life, right? See, when you speak, we see a silhouette of you, but that's not the real you. The real you is what comes out of your mouth. You have an earth suit on, but that ain't the real you. When you speak, that's the real you. The same way that y'all's a spirit, you are a spirit. Are you in that? So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Y'all, can you separate your word from you? Can you separate your word from you? You can't do it, can you? Neither can you separate y'all from his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with y'all. And the word, the word, the word was y'all. Sounds so simple, don't it? Yes, so complex. The same was in the beginning with y'all. All things was made by by who? Yeah. And without him was not anything made that was made. But as many, verse 12, as received him, to them gave he power to become the what? The sons. The, the, the what of y'all? The what of y'all? So let me ask y'all something. Why are y'all still toiling in this world, living beneath your station? Don't you know that there's a great earthquake coming? Don't you know there's a great earthquake coming? This earth is groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of Yah. <laughs> but in order for that to happen, we gotta open up our mouth and speak so we can bring pressure and get the earth moving. Oh, boy, they don't get it yet. We'll get there. I'm going to keep plowing in hope. <laughs> but even to them that believe on his name, which were born, which were born not of what? Blood. You've already been born of flesh and blood. You've already been born of flesh and blood. It's obvious. Look at you. Huh? Nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of who? So when you say you're born again, you know you're born again. You know you've been transformed, right? You were born of the will of Yah. That's why I'm asking, why you continue to keep living below your station? Don't you know who you are? And this segues back into the message about me. If I can just get Israel to start opening up your mouth and making declarations in the name of Jesus. There will be a whole lot more that could get done. And the word, that the word, and the word, the voice, was made, and people still having a difficult time figuring out who Jesus was. Jesus was the invisible image. He was the invisible image of the invisible Yah. Jesus was the word of Yah. The voice that said, let there be light. The same word. They did all they created. The same word that John said, he was before me. Yet physically he was born after him. Uh-oh. You hear this, right? And the word was made what? And guess what? When you got born again, the word was made flesh again. Sons of Yah. Born again. Yah keeps on recreating his son.
don't you know you don't have to sin? You don't have to sin. You can't sin because his seed remains in you. <laughs> and his word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Ain't you the begotten of the Father? Are you not a son of Yah? Well, you can understand this then, right? Huh? Now, you're not the word, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Full of grace. Somebody say favor. Full of, full of. So guess what? Just like in the days of Noah, that Noah found grace, guess what? Y'all looked down on this earth and he saw all of you Israelites and you found favor in y'all's eyes. Um, you got to get this, Israel. You got to get it. We all know that we were unfavorable people. You wouldn't have picked you. There ain't no Elliot. There ain't no way in hell you would have picked you. Deacon, ain't no way in hell you'd have picked you. You see yourself every morning in the mirror. You're like, uh-uh, ain't no way in hell I'd have picked you. Huh? But he saw something in you that you didn't see. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Israel, we're heading up here on a, on a spring feast right here. The day of Pentecost to where it's Holy Spirit. It needs to be not only renewed, but it needs to stay topped off to the zenith. From here all the way to Tabernacles, all the way through the death season, and then new again year after year after year after year after year. Now, the book teaches you stir up the gift of God. You hear that? Just like when a woman is cooking and she just stir, you know stirring the ingredients in the pot, you got to stir up. I don't care if you have to walk around in circles like this. I don't care if you have to dance like a duck. I don't care if you have to shake your hand, wave your hand, whatever it takes. You stir up the gift of y'all. And the one reason why you need to stir it up, because your dead flesh don't like it. <laughs> See, we're looking at a people in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation that literally has the favor of y'all on them. That's why I keep asking, why are you living beneath your station? Y'all don't know what station is? Huh? Why are you living beneath your, your calling? You're kings and priests. Sons of the living y'all. God has placed you above angels. He has seated you with Messiah in heavenly places. What in the world? Isn't that mind boggling? These angels and these seraphims, these seraphims that have been with y'all, ever since he created them. you only been on this earth for a short period of time and he's placed you above them. And not only that, he's given you even dominion over them. I tell you what, man, somebody gonna get this today. Somebody gonna understand y'all's favor. It's going to hit up a hard pow. You watch and see. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, that he cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. Hear that? See, that's the reason why 
that Yahshua deserves all the praises in the world. Because all of us being born in sin, in iniquity and transgression, we were separated from the king. Hmm? And when he said, it is finished. It is finished means that I have satisfied the sin offering that was required. Now, it is finished also means it's the beginning. Y'all getting this, right? Y'all getting this, right? Y'all let it marinate a little bit in you? So therefore, you don't have to sin. You can't sin because his seed is in you. It remains in you. Now, anytime that somebody decides to sin, you've got to go outside of the body because y'all is not going to tolerate sin in the body. And of his fullness have we all received and favor or grace for grace. Favor for favor. I know it's, I know it's hard to grasp, but every single one of us are walking around here in the midst of this generation like little Noah's. The same way that Noah found favor, the same way we found favor. How many of y'all knew you was different than everybody else? I didn't say you didn't sin like everybody else. I said you just knew you were different. Some things that people would, you had lines and limits that you would go. Some things, I just, wait a minute, I just couldn't, I just, there was no way I can't cross that now. You get it? You had a fear of y'all in you, even though you didn't know y'all. Was anybody like that? For out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace and truth, we have all received grace upon grace. This is the amplified version. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth, favor and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. Now, Grace and favor is not a license to sin. Grace and favor is actually a righteousness to keep you from sin. Because sin shall not have dominion over your body. It's the power of Yah to abstain from sin. And Yahweh said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I made them. And Noah found grace in the eyes of God. You know why? Because Noah wasn't doing what everybody else was doing. So how did Noah grab y'all's attention? He grabbed it by being different than everybody else. I know it's hard to grasp, but before you even, it were even made, y'all had predestined you, conformed you to be ordained, to be at this place right now in this time, to be filled with his Holy Spirit right now in this time, for you to know while you're alive that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life right now. Now, Noah, the generation of Noah was a just man. Well, he was what kind of man? A just man and a perfect in his what? 
Now, when you look at yourself, you don't see that, do you? Hmm? But do you have favor? Do y'all show grace? See what I mean? See, you don't see as y'all see. See, you, you have a record of wrong still in your head and your mind and stuff. But when y'all sees you, he sees the blood. <laughs> I got to, I got to, y'all got to get this, man. You got to get this. Y'all's not seeing you for the sin you repented of yesterday. Y'all seeing the blood. And when he sees the blood, he sees his son. And when he sees his son, he says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Now you are the sons of Yah because of the blood. Yeah. It's coming. So he was a just man. That word just means that he was righteous in his government, in his cause, in his conduct, in his character, as justified and vindicated by Yah. Right, correct, and lawful. See, David's last words. Anybody want to hear David's last words? Anybody want to hear David's last words? Now, these be the last words of David. The son of Jesse said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of Yah of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, the spirit of Yahweh spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The Yah of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that rule of over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of Elohim. Y'all hear that? That was his last words. So what do you need to be doing? These need to be your words right now. Notice they called him a sweet psalmist. I looked over at Ranger while, while the music was playing. I said, you know I wrote that song, don't you? He said, yeah, I know. And I'm smiling too. I started to tell him the next one too, that one too. Thank you very much. It, it, always, it, it takes a pastor to get it, don't it? Never mind. It takes a pastor to get it, don't it? Deuteronomy 32, 4, he is the rock. His word is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. And y'all of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. So let us remember where we come from. Ephesians 2, 1. And you, he made alive. When you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and your sins, in which you once walked, you were following the ways of this world, influenced by this present age, in accordance with the prince of the power of the air, Satan. The spirit who is now at work in the disobedient unbelieving who fight against the purposes of Yah. Among these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by the sinful self, indulging in desires of human nature without the Holy Spirit, and impulses of the sinful mind. We were by nature children under the sentence of Yah's wrath, just like the rest of mankind. But Yah, A 
But yeah. But yeah. But yeah. So very rich in mercy. Because of his great and wonderful love which he loved us. Even when we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins, he made us spiritually alive together with Messiah. Oh, praise Yah. For his mercy endure forever. <laughs> Man. For by his grace, his undeserved favor and mercy, you have been saved from Yah's judgment. Woo-wee. And he raised us up together with him. When we believed and seated us with him, where? Where we sitting at? Why you living below your station? Because we are in Messiah Yahshua. And he did this so that in the ages to come, that he might clearly show the in measurable and unsurpassed riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Messiah. But guess what? It's got to be done in Jesus. By providing our redemption. For it is by grace. That means Yah's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Messiah. That you have been saved actually delivered from the judgment and given eternal life through faith. Boy, ain't y'all good? Ain't y'all good? And this salvation is not of yourselves. Not through your own effort, but is the undeserved graciousness, gift of Yah. Yah has given each and every last one of us eternal life, which is a gift from Yah. All because He loved us. All because He loved us. Y'all want to know how wonderful this gift is? This, this gift is so wonderful that he sealed us with the Holy Spirit. See, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive a seal. And when you receive a seal, that means you got a stamp of approval. And when you have a stamp of approval, that means you belong. And once Yah seals us, that seal can't be broken. Not as a result of your own works, nor your attempts to keep the law, so that no one would be able to boast or take credit in any way of it for his salvation. For we are his workmanship, his own master's work, a work of art. Y'all hear that? I know you don't think you're a work of art, but you're, you're a beautiful masterpiece. You just don't see yourself the way he sees you. But I'm submitting to you, if you could see yourself the way Yah sees you, I guarantee you will carry yourself differently. I bet you will walk differently. 
I bet you have a confidence in you. I bet you have a pep in yourself. I bet you are know that you're anointed. I bet you know that you could break every yoke. I guarantee you that every day you feel like you can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Don't the book say this? Repeat after me. I can do all things. things. Through Messiah. Messiah. Yahshua. Yahshua. That strengthens me. So you can do what? You can do what? You can do what? I can heal the sick. I can cleanse the leper. I can raise the dead. I can cast out devils. I can be encouraged. I can be on fire. I can stay filled. With the Holy Spirit. You can do all things, Israel. <laughs> Not just some, but all. For we are his workmanship of his master's work, the work of art created in Messiah, Yahshua, reborn from above. Reborn from above. Spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works. Ready to be used. Are you ready? Are you ready to be used, Israel? Do you stay ready? Now, this ready means you have to keep yourself in the love of Yah. That means you still got something to do. Hallelujah. Reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed ready to be used, which y'all prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living a good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. Can you believe a righteous man's step is ordered by y'all, right? So ain't he ordering your steps every single day? Didn't he order your steps in the Messiah? Titus 2, 1, for the grace of Yah that bring us salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that denying what? Ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. When? When? Right now in this present world. It teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly and moral desires and to live sensible, upright, and godly lives with a purpose that reflects spiritual maturity in this present age. See, this is your station. This is who you are as the sons and daughters of Yah. Awaiting and confidently expecting the fulfillment of our blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great Yah, of our great Yah, of our great Yah, of our great Yah, and Savior, and salvation, Messiah, Yahshua. And my question, Israel, are you eagerly anticipating his coming? When you wake up in the morning, is that joy in your spirit? Is that joy in your mind that you're clothed and in your right mind? Because every single day is one more day closer to Jesus. One day closer to Jesus. Who willingly, who willingly gave himself to be crucified on our behalf to redeem us and purchase our freedom from wickedness. Ain't you glad you ain't wicked no more? Ain't you happy you ain't wicked no more? Huh? From all wickedness and to purify for himself a chosen and very special people. See, Isaiah, nobody, man, I think you special, man, but guess what? You are the apple of y'all's eye. You special. You are. (laughs) 
And I know life gets rough sometimes, Summer, but you're the apple of y'all's eye. No. Huh? Very special. I, I, believe me, I don't think there's nothing special about Kabir, but y'all does. <laughs> He's special. <laughs> Who are enthusiastic for doing what is good? But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Yah dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Messiah, he is none of his. And if the Messiah be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit of life because of righteousness. You see, a real true born, born again man and woman, they only seek to pursue righteousness every single day. They're always looking for peace. Always looking for peace. See, if you ever get around somebody that ain't looking for peace, then you know they're in the flesh. And if they're in the flesh, then they're outside the body. So being in the body, we got to ask them, why are you below your station? Won't you come on back into the body to where there's life and joy and peace in the Holy Spirit? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, and uh-oh again. Y'all hearing this? But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahshua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Messiah from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his what? Now, Yahshua was filled with the Holy Spirit. John was filled with the Holy Spirit. The early assembly was filled with the Holy Spirit. Where do you think the quickening comes from? Come on. You got to have the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, there ain't nothing to quicken. The Holy Spirit don't quicken dead ashes. He quickened that which is already alive. So, so yesterday I was in the house in between dinner and coming to fellowship, or coming up to music, was it yeah, after music practice, right? Coming up to fellowship. And of course my, these shies are sitting up there watching me just clicking all over the place. Is that right? I mean, they just, they just sitting there watching you. You know how the Holy Spirit just quickening, right? And I mean, I'm talking about in the zone too. And then sometimes, lately I've been getting these quickens, they, they, when they quicken, you know, the Holy Spirit quickening, then sometimes you just gotta stop and just go, ah. Uh. So I learned something from all this. Instead of just letting it just quicken, I learned how to, when, it, when, it, when the Holy Spirit does quicken, I learned how to bask and marinate in it. It's kind of like having an orgasm. You want to keep it as long as you can. Look at y'all. So Summer says, Summer says, ooh, won't you, won't you come over here and lay hands on me? How'd you put it, baby? He said, come and touch me. Come lay hands on me. I went over and touched her. She goes, ah! <laughs> and then I hit her again, ah! Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Selena was sitting next to her saying, I ain't even got to have that, and I feel it. <laughs> he said, I feel it. Oh, man. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When was the last time you was quicken? When was the last time you was quicken? If you don't know how to, yeah, come on, man. I mean, you can stir up the gift of y'all yourself. If you ain't been touched in a while, you can get touched right now. Oh, 
Oh, yes, you can. This is how usually conversations come on, you know what I mean? And some of she just wants because she's greedy for the Holy. She's greedy for anything. Because I'm glad to lay hands. I said, maybe I lay hands on it, get, get all this damn fire out of you. Not the good fire, the bad fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tomorrow, we're going to be at the Feast of Pentecost, out of which Yah has invited us to it. Hallelujah. So between now and then, you need to keep him at the forefront of your mind. Hallelujah. Who's, anybody want to be baptized? How many, everybody sit down for a second. How many people want to be baptized? One, stand up if you want to be baptized. That's a whole lot easier. One, two, three, four, five. Well, we don't need everybody. Did y'all bring y'all, y'all, y'all? Huh? Pastor Corey, Pastor Corey going to baptize y'all, all right? <laughs> You read the scripture. You can read the scripture. Pastor Cora baptized, you read scripture. Hallelujah. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Filled with the Holy Ghost I am. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. Y'all been redeemed? Hallelujah. Let's get ready for Pentecost tomorrow then. Hallelujah. Get ready for Pentecost. I try to make sure I don't give the security a nightmare, man. I said, oh, let me turn around real quick. <laughs> I try to be mindful. You know what I mean? Try to be mindful. Hallelujah. Man, y'all is good, isn't he? Just wanted to give an encouraging word before the feast tomorrow. Hallelujah. So y'all enjoy each other. Enjoy yourselves. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for the Sabbath day. Thank God and pray for the rest of the Israelites are going to be traveling here tomorrow for their safe journey too, all right? So it's uh, on 2.30, dinner time. 2.30, dinner time. So it's plenty of time for baptism. And um, hey, the creek's still up. Is it bro, Scott? Do you know? It's decent? Okay, good. Hallelujah. Well, should be good to go. Watch all them scenes go right down there. Hallelujah. All right, Israel, one time to be encouraged, all right? Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in our sight. Oh, Yah, my strength, my redeemer, dismissed in the beautiful name of Yahshua, the Hamashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Shabbat Shalom, Israel, the King is coming.